Okay, something is once again spinning around me. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in this video we're going to be talking about some new discoveries and new updates about this very unusual and never before seen nebula that you can sort of see right here, that's also visible in the X-ray light as seen by the Chandra telescope with this image showing us what it actually saw, but also visible in a lot of other frequencies, yet possessing a lot of features not visible in any other nebula making this unusual object that's approximately 7000 light years away from us one of the strangest such formations in the Milky Way galaxy. But we've actually discussed this object approximately a year ago. You can find a video about this in the description below. But in a nutshell, just over a year ago, the scientists realized what might have created this and more specifically realized that there's even a historical mentioning of this event happening about a thousand years ago. And so let's discuss exactly what happened here and what was recently discovered about this unusual object and talk about the implications of these new discoveries. But first, let's start with what exactly makes this particular nebula so unusual. Now normally, when the scientists find different nebula, they're usually a result of some kind of a cataclysmic event, sometimes a supernova, or in other times, a really massive star emitting a lot of gas, changing completely, turning into something else, and then illuminating all of this gas, producing a lot of colorful emissions in the process. And quite a lot of these exist everywhere around us. But when it comes to nebula, it's not just the color or the shape that matters, it's also the type of elements we find within them. Something that the scientists can normally find by looking at the spectrum of the light coming from the nebula. Here's one example from the nebula known as M57. This is the iconic ring nebula created by a star very similar to our Sun. And so in this case, by looking at the spectrum of the light, the scientists can definitively see what kind of a gas is creating all of these colors and all of these emissions. Here you can see there is quite a lot of helium, some oxygen, we have some nitrogen and some sulfurous, as well as a little bit of hydrogen, which is pretty much what you would expect from a typical Sun-like star. But in this case, the things are a little bit different there is really no hydrogen or helium whatsoever. Yet there is quite a lot of neon, magnesium, silicon and sulfur. And the shape is different. And even the speed of particles moving away from the center is much higher than usual. Things here move at approximately 1000 km per second. And more recently the scientists also found quite a lot of sulfur and argon, which really doesn't make sense at all. Not to mention that this is also some kind of a really powerful X-ray source, and seems to also have this weird and unusual shape. Unlike a lot of other nebula that don't really have any of these features. But by knowing the speed of the particles, the scientists were able to trace back the approximate date when this might have started. And it turns out that all of this very likely started approximately a thousand years ago. And as you might have learned from that previous video, it seems to correspond to an observation from 1181. This was what's known as a guest star reported by many Chinese and Japanese astronomers, or I guess astrologists would be a more appropriate term, that described the overall brightness of the star and mentioned that it stayed pretty bright for approximately 6 months. Naturally back then they had no idea what they are looking at, and so instead it was seen as a kind of an omen. But for the scientists today, it means that it was very likely some kind of a supernova, but a very very unusual one. Over time, it was established that it was probably some kind of a type 1 supernova, and more specifically, a type 1AX supernova. Something that the scientists believe doesn't always destroy the star, and something that ends up producing what's known as a zombie star. Basically leaving behind a remnant, potentially extremely exotic remnant, that survives the original explosion, and stays behind to then produce all of the powerful X-rays and a lot of other emissions. But very intriguingly, the modern observations establish that this is also some kind of a X-ray pulsar. It seems to pulsate 15 times per second and represents an extremely rare object. In contrast, there's another really famous pulsar, the Crab Pulsar, that was created by a supernova around the same time in 1054 AD, but it actually lost a lot of its rotational energy and a lot of its emissions and looks completely different. In this case, representing a typical type of a pulsar, with quite a few of these discovered in the last few years. But since only 9 different supernova have ever been actually seen with naked eye in the history of astronomical observations, 
This particular discovery makes it super intriguing because it seems to have very different emissions and very different properties to anything else the scientists have ever seen. And the original explanation was that, well, maybe whatever happened here created some kind of a very powerful, very hot and extremely active wolf Raya star. A kind of a transition stage before the star possibly goes supernova again and maybe leaves some kind of a black hole or a neutron star behind. But further analysis determined that it's very likely what's known as a Super Chandrasekhar object, with a mass of about 1.5 solar masses and ridiculously hot temperatures of over 200,000 degrees Celsius. Or in simpler terms, it was basically a supermassive white dwarf, way more massive than it should be and possessing a lot of properties that we still do not understand, with the wind speed on the surface being about 15,000 km per second, possessing very unusual chemical composition and representing what seems to be a collision between two white dwarfs. Or in other words, representing the first ever known collision between two white dwarfs that seem to have created some kind of a really 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 massive super white dwarf. An object a lot more powerful and a lot more massive than just a single white dwarf. With the resulting collision turning this object, the fifth brightest star in the night skies, even though it was almost 3000 light years away from us but also producing the strangest nebula we've ever seen. In this case, the shape, the composition, and even the velocity of particles is still very difficult to explain. But this right here is the recent observation and the most recent image, which essentially updates some of the older images that unfortunately were not as detailed or did not provide enough information. And so this new recent observation and recent analysis presents us with a little bit more information once again confirming that this very likely happened in 1181 AD and most likely created some kind of an unstable star that sometime in the future is going to collapse into a neutron star potentially producing another explosion or some kind of a major emission and very likely within the next 10,000 years. But more importantly, once again confirming that this seems to be a result of two white dwarfs colliding together, making this a really important target for many future studies or basically the only such object known to us right now. But because there are still so many unanswered questions, it means that we're going to be talking about this object in many more videos to come. Right now this is basically the strangest nebula in the Milky Way galaxy and because of its composition also has quite a lot of questions to answer. Like I mentioned before, no hydrogen, no helium, but quite a lot of other elements like argon. And that's what the scientists currently do not understand. But for now unfortunately that's all we have. At the moment, it's still a pretty big mystery and will probably remain a mystery until future observations with potentially better telescopes. But until then, thank you for watching, maybe check out that previous video that goes through a little bit more information and a little bit more history of the detection of this nebula. But either way, subscribe if you'd like to find out what we actually do learn about this in the next few years and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Thank you for watching, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.